Right guys, hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I've kind of put aside a few articles I've come across and a few just like videos or whatever from the car world that I thought I'd share with you and we'd have a little laugh and also just look at a few things that have been going on in our industry. So, let's get started. First of all is a video here of a drag race where we have classic supercar, Dodge Viper V10, you know, not particularly heavy, next to a family car, a Cadillac CTSV station wagon, which usually has just over 550 horsepower from a big V8, but no way a family car should, you know, get close to the big Bronte supercar. Let's see what happens here then. Off they go, about the same, and then, boom, off he goes. Gone, into the distance, family car, the groceries, the milk's flying out the back, the whole ordeal, the car's got a little backpack, which as we can see here, just about before the camera cuts, it's a bloody family car with a parachute on the back. I mean, yes to whoever has done this, whoever has put 1,800 horsepower into this 200 mile per hour CTSV wagon, 200 mile per hour in half a mile, by the way. Well, 197 miles an hour. What an animal. I came across this video and uh, I just thought this is so sick. Cause I watched it, I was like, who the hell is drag racing a station wagon? And then it turns out the thing is nuts. Love the fact it's got a parachute on the back, which shows that they've basically put 1800 horsepower in it and then thought, we'll just leave the stock brakes, because that seems like a great idea. I know, let's just put a parachute. So that was one of the first videos I came across. Now, we're sticking to like the American theme with video number two. Mustang drivers already don't really have the the best reputation. Here is a Mustang driver doing a bunch of donuts and a really rather tasty looking V8 powered Mustang. And then before you know it, just bang. Straight, straight into a post. Now, to be honest, you shouldn't really be doing this, but we've all been there. We've all wanted to do donuts. Everyone at some point, as a car guy, if you've had the opportunity you've, and there was somewhere empty, you've done donuts. So to be honest, can't really blame him for giving it a go in a completely empty car park. He at no point gets close to other people around, so can't blame him for that. Doing it somewhere where there are massive cement posts, not too far, maybe not the wisest way, place to do it. But then the thing which actually, I mean, thankfully everyone was okay. The car's a little bit screwed up because it basically just went straight into the engine there. But cracks me up the most about this, if you watch it again, there is zero reaction from the person filming. So you always will have like a friend of yours watching this uh, and, and you know, you say like, oh, I'm gonna do some donuts, like film this. And usually if anything happens, that friend like sprints over or reacts like a little scream or like there's some sort of reaction. If you watch this again, nothing. The camera doesn't shake, nothing. So here he is doing his good old donuts. He decides, I don't really know what he decides to do. And bang, not a shake. Not a sound, completely normal. Starts walking in the direction, but walking. I mean, keeping the camera steady. There is no sense of panic in whoever is filming this video, which killed me. I saw this video and I was like, I've never seen anyone so calm in this situation. That is the Mustang video. Ah, this is cool. This is a 2021, believe it or not, Ferrari 250 GT short wheelbase competizione revival. A revival effectively is a fancy word of saying it's not an original 250 GT short wheelbase because this one costs only, I really mean this, only one million dollars. But normally it'd be more between 20 to 30 million for one of the 74 originals. This is a UK based company called GTO Engineering who have effectively been <coughs> restoring classic Ferraris for years and years and years and they know exactly what goes into it, all the details, whether it's at visual level, you know, above the skin or under the skin, you know, exactly what you need to do to make a 250 SWB competition effectively. So they've done just that. They've taken a old parts, uh, well, old engine parts, basically, from, you know, wrecked Ferrari 330s or 365s, and then put the body on it, so kind of a brand new body, um, chassis, all this stuff, and um, then modernized it. So it's a car that you could use a lot more than an original, you know, SWB. Yes, it's very expensive, but you know, you've made a bunch of money, you decide you want to spend a million dollars on a car, you don't want to look like too much of a douchebag in like a Bugatti Veyron or something. So you buy yourself a classic car, <laughs> which isn't a classic car twist. What I'm saying makes absolutely no sense, but you understand. I think it's awesome. It looks, I mean, so cool. 
at least from these photos, I cannot see a single difference between, you know, an S3. Well, the differences you will get is this can be specced with aircon, you can get like USB ports and stuff. So you get all of the perks of kind of the fact that it's built in 2020, but you don't really get any of the down draws, down draws, downsides of the, you know, proper classics where you'll just constantly be having issues. It looks great and it doesn't cost $30 million or whatever it should. Yes, you might get a little bit snobbed at some Ferrari, you know, classic A dinners where everyone's wearing a multi million pound suit and drinking wine from 1925 and comparing their yacht sizes. But do you care? Let's talk about something else, which is expensive, shall we? While we're on a roll. No. Now, we mentioned Bugatti Veyron. Someone who decided not to go down the classic route decided to buy himself a Bugatti Veyron. Take it, well, not only a Bugatti Veyron, a kind of one-off design Bugatti Veyron. Take it to an event called Supercar Owner Circle, which I love, to be honest. Um, I, I went once and it's insane. I mean, I have never seen so many hypercars in one place. I wonder if they have a WhatsApp group chat. Because if they do, that has to be one of the highest net worth WhatsApp group chats. And imagine the, like, you know, potential to broker cars through that WhatsApp group chat. I mean, you just put anything in there. Someone's probably already got a couple of them. I mean, you show up in a Koenigsegg there, there's 10 others next to you. You show up in a Veyron, there's another five or six there. However, this Veyron had um, some, yeah, not such a good fate. They were drag racing, as you do in hypercars, on an airstrip in Gstaad. Of course, it was in bloody Gstaad. I mean, billionaires meeting to drag race their hypercars at an airfield in Gstaad. Could you think of anything any more kind of exclusive than that? Anyway, oh, and Shmi was there. That makes it the ultimate event. Brake fade is a real thing, even on an expensive car like this. So clearly they were doing many, many runs. And there is a video where you can see this Bugatti is, you know, it's on its way. And a feral Nick, here it comes. He starts braking just about there. You see the air brake go up, smoke come out the back, brake failure. <laughs> ah! Ooh, that hurts my soul to watch that video. And he smacks into the hay barrels at the end, which are there to kind of try and slow the car down. I mean, the hay barrels did absolutely nothing. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, they didn't really do much apart from destroy the front of this beautiful Bugatti Veyron. He drives off and actually leaves the event that day driving. So clearly there weren't any mechanical issues with the car, but aesthetic for sure and body panels which are going to need to be replaced which on a car which originally cost just under two million dollars that now is probably more because of the rarity of this spec a very particular paint job i don't even want to know or think how much uh, that is going to cost and the fact that they were on an airstrip is it insured i'm not sure so yes that is a video of a bugatti Veyron which went kind of viral and i was like i can't not chat about it today something else which costs a lot of money we're talking about things which all of these things are over a million this is sick is, is what it is it's a vario mobile perfect 1200 platinum first of all what a name they were like let's call it perfect because i mean why not it is perfect 1200 because it sounds it's more than a thousand and then platinum perfect 1200 platinum do you have a more luxury name than that it is an rv a very big rv uh, you can have it with a 12.8 liter six cylinder turbo diesel engine producing over 500 horsepower but its party trick is as you can see here it has a little garage so you can basically drive your car up your rv's bum and hide it away it is very very cool um here they've put it with an amg gti it costs 1.8 million dollars excluding the car that you need to put in the back of it but it is so sick. I mean, first of all, as if arriving at your camping site or wherever you are, pulling your supercar out the back isn't enough. You then arrive and it just expands out of the side with these like pull out living room things. And the interior looks like something out of a yacht or some fancy five star hotel. I mean, it doesn't even look like a house because I've never really seen a house this nice before. So, I mean, what, what a thing, what a machine. For some reason, I've always been obsessed with these super luxury, I don't know, like these kind of things I love, like super luxurious RVs. It is, there is no need for it. Like, why do you need to bring your supercar? Why do you need it to extend out the sides? And why do you need it to be so bloody fancy? You don't, but it's so sick that someone's done it and someone's called it the perfect 1200 platinum. Congratulations. Right, let's end on a, a kind of like really cool news, exciting news, which is that Lamborghini have just produced a 10,000th Lamborghini Aventador. Uh, so that makes 120,000 V12 cylinders. Hey, hey, mass right there. So cool. I mean, there's a lot of Aventadors. Hugely successful model for them. So it's just really good to see a company like Lamborghini doing well with a car, which honestly, 
it's fairly outdated now. That single clutch gearbox belongs, you know, in, yeah. That single clutch gearbox is prehistoric now, but the car looks great. The 10,000th model was an SVJ Roadster, not a 63, uh, uh, normal standard, if you can call it that, SVJ Roadster. Matte gray exterior, red accents, black and red neon Contaro interior. Awesome spec, and just massive congratulations to Lamborghini for having pumped out over 10,000 of these. I mean, like 300,000 pound supercars. They're, they're like kind of bridging that gap between supercar and hypercar Aventadors. So the fact that they've sold that many of them is really, really a great achievement. So well done to them. Thought we'd finish on that note. And I look forward to seeing what the replacement Aventador will look like. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Really, really good fun filming. And I'm just gonna, if you guys have any articles or anything that you would like us to talk about here, send them over. I just enjoy doing this stuff and chatting with you guys. It's always a pleasure. So subscribe if you aren't already. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon. Cheers, bye bye.